Welcome back to my Roblox beginner scripting tutorial guide. My name is Braldev, and in this episode, we'll be talking about breaks and continues. Now, before we do, uh, I want to go back to our loop scripts that we created in the last episode, because there was something I didn't mention about using task.wait statements for these for loops and also while loops and things like that. I forgot to mention that if we were to have multiple for loops, like one for loop after another, so not a nested loop, but a for loop or a while loop or any kind of loop that that happens back to back. Like, let's say we had another for loop by saying for i equals one comma 100 comma one do. And then we write a print statement here saying uh, this is the second for loop like this. You might expect both of these for loops to run, but in actuality, if we go into the game and hit play, then it's not going to print um, our second for loop. And instead, it's just going to go through the color changing scripts that we had in the previous um, loop. Now, why is this happening? Well, because when we're going through our first for loop, it's going to go through the first iteration and it's going to change the base plate's brick color. It's going to wait one, do this, wait one, do this, wait one, and then it's gonna go back up here. But it's trying to wait until this for loop is finished before it goes down here to execute whatever it is that it's going to execute afterwards, which is why um, it's important for us to um, realize when we want to execute our for loops or our while loops because the order matters when it comes to um, doing these sorts of things. Now, there are ways we can spontaneously run for loops at the same time, but that's going to be covered in a future episode in my advanced scripting tutorial guide. So you don't really have to worry about that too much, but that's just something I wanted to add on to that um, before we continued with what we're going to be talking about in today's episode. Okay, so now that we've covered that, let's go back to our loop script so we can talk about what breaks and uh, continues are. So I'm going to delete um, basically everything that we have in the script up until this point. So I'm going to hit control A and then hit backspace. And what I'm going to do is create another for loop. So I'm going to say um, for let's make our incremental value. Um, let's say I this time. So we're going to say for I equals one comma. Uh, let's make some really big number like let's say 100,000 like this. Um, and then we're going to have our incremental value as one. Now, here's another thing I didn't mention in the last episode, and that is you actually don't need to have an incremental value if you know that it's going to be one because the incremental value is going to be one by default. So I'm actually just going to delete that because we're going to be incrementing it by one unless you wanted it to be something different, like two or three. Then, yeah, this is the only time you would need to have the incremental value. But in this case, we don't need it. So we're going to say one comma one hundred thousand do. And then we're going to hit enter just like this. Now, if we were to run this for loop 100,000 times, it's pretty ridiculous with how much processing power is going to be needed in order to execute whatever is going to be inside of here. So if I were to make a print statement saying um, this statement mint is printed just like this, um, then obviously we wouldn't really want to go through all 100,000 of these iterations, because at some point we may want to stop if a certain condition has met. Like if let's say we were in the 200th iteration, then we would probably want to stop it before it reaches the 100,000th iteration. So what we can do is actually write a conditional by saying if I is equal to let's say uh, 200, then what we're going to do is use what's called break just like this. So, so it's going to go down the loop by starting at one, and then it's going to keep incrementing until I reaches 200. And once it does, it's literally going to stop the for loop by using this break statement. So if we go into the game and hit play, then what we should see is this statement is printed 200 times and it did not print 100,000 times like we were supposed to, because we made it stop at the 200 mark. And so this is very important. If certain conditions have been met, for your for loop and you don't want the for loop or your while loop to run anymore. We can do the same thing with while loops. So if we were to delete this code right over here and write a while loop instead. So we're going to say, well, actually, we don't need to get rid of this. What we can do down here is just say uh, our counter variable. So we're going to say local uh, counter equals one comma or no, sorry. So we're going to say local counter equals one. So that's the value we're going to start at. And then what we're going to do is say while counter is less than or equal to some ridiculously big number, like let's say uh, 1 million instead, uh, we can do this number. So we're going to say do. So we're going to write our incremental statement um, because as you know, a for loop does it for us, but a while loop doesn't. So we have to do it ourselves. We have to say counter equals counter plus one, just like that. And that's going to happen at the very end of the while loop. So next thing we're going to do 
is check for a condition. If counter is equal to, let's say, 500, then what we're going to do is write a break right over here. Now, the first thing we're going to do is write our print statement by saying this while statement is printed just like this. And so now this is basically our while loop that does um, basically the same thing as this up here, except it's going to stop at 500 instead of 200. We can even confirm this by instead of 200. So now if we go into the game and hit play, then what we should see in the output is this statement is printed in the for loop 200 times, and this while statement is printed 500 times because that's when we decide to stop it. Now, that is essentially how we use breaks inside of a script, but there's another one we can use, and that is called continue. So what I'm going to do is delete these breaks that we had inside of our examples. And what I'm going to do for this for loop is basically say, uh, if a certain condition is met, then we just want to skip this iteration. So basically what I mean is if we start at the very top here by saying, if I is equal to, let's say 10, then uh, we're going to make a print statement by saying, I is equal to 10, so skip this iteration, just like that. And then um, that's basically going to, uh, okay, and then what we're going to do is drop a line and then say the keyword continue like this. So what is happening with this for loop? So basically, if we start at one, then it's going to check if i is equal to 10. If it's not, then it's just gonna go down here and make the print statement. But if it does equal to 10, then it's going to basically use this continue keyword to skip this iteration so it doesn't make this print statement happen. Um, so if we go into the game and hit play, then what should be happening is, oh, wait a minute, I forgot to break the script. Oh, this is about to be really slow. Uh, okay, so, <laughs> okay, so it looks like the, the script crashed. It said script timeout exhaust allowed execution time. And that's because if we go to our script, I forgot to leave the break statement inside of here. Um, thinking that it was a good idea to just get rid of it. So uh, take that as a lesson for me to not do that. Um, what we're going to do in here is basically say if i is equal to 200, then we're just going to break the statement just like that. Uh, we need to be careful about that. And I think I'm going to do the same thing here as well. So if i is, or no, sorry, if counter for this while loop is equal to uh, 200, then we're going to break it just like this. Okay, so I'm just going to separate these so that it's easier to read. But yeah, um, take that as a lesson to make sure that you do have break statements if you don't want to execute this many number of times. So what we were supposed to do here is if we go into the game, then we can see that it first states that this statement is printed nine times. And then it goes to the 10th iteration by saying i is equal to 10. So we're going to skip this iteration. And then finally, it's going to print the rest of the statements until it reaches 200. And that is basically uh, how this for loop structure goes with continues and also breaks. So these two are very important for controlling our for loops and also our while loops if we reach certain conditions inside of our scripts. So that is what I wanted to show you inside of this episode, and I hope you find this to be useful. Now, as an added bonus, I'm gonna teach you about the concept of comments because when we've been working with scripts up until this point, we've had lines of code that we just didn't want to execute while we wanted other pieces of code to execute, but we didn't want to delete the entire statement because we just wanted to bring it back uh, once we were done with whatever it is we were trying to execute. So I'm gonna be teaching you something that you can actually use to save your pieces of code that doesn't run uh, so that we can have other pieces of code run inside of our scripts. And that is with the use of comments. So what I'm going to do is basically make our for loop and our while loop visible, uh, just like this. And this is how we write a comment to basically block out code if we don't want to execute it inside of our script. So the way we write a comment is by basically putting in two dashes just like this. So it's gonna be grayed out like this. And we can put in whatever we want inside of the script by writing, I don't know, a print statement here uh, with whatever it is we want to print inside of here. And as you can see, it's grayed out. So what this means is this line isn't going to be printed inside of our script, but it is going to be saved here in case we want to use this script later for, for testing purposes, or if we just wanted to uh, add this back inside of our script for later use, then we can just uh, uncomment this print statement and it's going to show that we we are able to run this again. So if we want to hide it, then we can just add in two dashes before it 
and it's not going to run inside of a script. Now, if we want to comment out multiple lines, what we can do is basically put in two dashes and then we're going to put in what's called hard brackets. So instead of parentheses, what we're going to use is hard brackets and we're gonna use two of them. So we're going to put in the left hard bracket and then another left hard bracket and then we're going to hit enter and we're gonna hit enter again. And basically what's going to be contained inside of here is basically comments that make up multiple lines. Because if we were to drop a line from this print statement, then it's just going to execute inside of our script. But we can have multiple comments within this block right here. So we can have a line here, we can have a line here, a line here, and then a line here. So it's just gonna keep on going as long as it fits within the boundaries of this comment block. So now, with that in mind, we can comment out this while true do statement if we don't want to execute it by putting in two dashes just like this, and then the hard bracket, hard bracket, and then we're going to add two hard brackets at the end. So we're going to drop a line and then add uh, the end bracket and then another end bracket just like this. And as you can see, this code block is now commented out and we can put down um, more things inside of here and this is not going to be executed. So if we go inside of the game, hit stop and then hit play one more time, then we can see that it's just going to be the for loop that executes and it's going to skip this while loop. And once again, if we want to execute our while loop again, then we're just going to get rid of the comments so that we can show it up inside of our script again. So that's something very useful that I think you should be able to add inside of your scripts um, if you want to execute specific blocks of code and if you also want to comment out blocks of code that you don't want to execute in this current uh, time frame. Um, comments are also useful if you want to just um, have a human readable way to like express like what certain what certain uh, pieces of code do. So if I were to add a comment over here by saying this for loop uh, goes through 100,000 uh, iterations until certain conditions are met. So this is another way you can use comments is just by saying uh, or explaining what pieces of code do. And that's another thing you can do with comments as well. So that's basically a short introduction to comments in this episode. So for today's learning objective, what I want you to do is add break statements and continue statements to your code and also use comments to describe what your for loops and your while loops do or just any pieces of code in general. And for whatever code that you don't use, I want you to comment them out using comment blocks or just comment statements. So you have a lot to do for this episode. So I'm excited to see what you do for this one. So once again, once you finish your code, I want you to go down to the comments, paste your code so that other people can see what you uh, have done for this challenge if you're comfortable sharing it. So with that being said, that's going to be it. I, I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Take care.